Rub up your engines! Today, by popular demand, I'm going to talk about cars that you can get for under $60,000 that were really fast. I put the limit at 60 grand because who's spending 100, 200, 300, or even $3 million on a fast car? I'm talking about regular people here. My all time favorite car under 60 grand that was fast was a 2013 Shelby. Cobra GT500. I had one for a whole week. Good thing I only had it for a week. If I would have had it any longer, there probably wouldn't be any Scotty here making videos to help you out. That was the last car that Carroll Shelby had anything to do with making, and the thing was a beast, but it list priced under $60,000. Now try finding a car that goes 200 miles an hour. Most of them, 200, 300,000, millions of dollars. They actually tested them in Europe on a really long road and they got over 200 miles an hour. Now it requires so much more energy to go 200 miles an hour than it does to go 100 miles an hour. It's an insane engineering feat to do so in a car that costs less than 60 grand. But this thing put on a whopping 667 horsepower. Now it did have a supercharger on it to make it go. I mean you got to keep ramming that air in. And the front of the vehicle didn't even have a grill. It had a giant hole. And it needed a hole that big to suck enough air in to run the vehicle and to cool it so it didn't overheat when it was going 200 miles an hour. They ended up having to use a carbon fiber drive shaft on the thing because they wanted to use aluminum to save weight but the aluminum ones kept bending so it's a pretty high tech car for under $60,000. Now the 2020 GT500 they made it so it only, only <laughs> goes 180 miles an hour because they realized to go 200 takes so much energy and those things with all the tax title and all this other stuff, they start at like $73,000. It's a long way from the price of the 2013 it doesn't go as fast. Now the next fast fun car for under 60 grand, a 2018 Honda Civic Type R. Now sure it's not as insane as the Mustang and the Camaro, but for a small car, those little rocket ships are fun to drive around. I've got customers with them and I love it when they bring it in for oil changes and stuff and I get to test it out. That sucker could go 169 miles an hour. The Honda engineers designed it to have the right amount of ground force so when it's going fast it still handles quite well. If you get in one of those and you're going super fast you're going to notice the handling is actually much better than the Mustangs or the Camaros, also lower to the ground car too, but people are fighting over them now trying to buy them. I had a customer recently buy one here in Houston. They had to go the whole way to Albuquerque to find one that was a decent price because all the local dealers here, whenever they had them, they were jacking the price up really high. So we went all the way to Albuquerque to buy one. And when you have a car as small as that Civic with 306 turbocharged horsepower, you got something that's really gonna do some screaming, especially at low to mid range speed, a lighter vehicle, so it can just take off faster and also stop faster. Now, as for the styling of the RA, people either love it or they hate it, but all the weird fins and stuff, Honda put them on to make them aerodynamic so they can drive around at 169 miles an hour and still have great control. After World War II, when Honda seriously started to make motorcycles, they had a lot of aeronautic engineers. They weren't allowed to build fighter planes or stuff anymore, so they made motorcycles and went really fast and at high speeds. So those Japanese bikes with all those fairings, those are more like wings going down the road than motorcycles, the way they're designed. So if you want a small car with speed, and they only come in standard transmissions, the Honda Civic Type R, hey, probably the car for you if you value bang for your buck. And if you do decide to drive them slow at certain times, you still get really good gas mileage. Shelby Cobra GT500, I got about three miles a gallon. I was driving like a maniac. When I did drive the speed limit, it still only got about 13 miles a gallon. They're big, gigantic, supercharged V8 engines. Now the next fast car for under 60 grand, Dodge Challenger with the Hellcat engine. Now it's an overall bigger car than a Mustang, so it's not quite as nimble, but it goes zero to 60 in a mind blowing 3.4 seconds. Now there is a faster car than that. That's the Tesla Model S. When you pay 15 grand for its ludicrous function, it can go zero to 60 
in 2.0 seconds. That's just insane. But then again, here I'm talking about cars that cost less than 60 grand, so you can forget the Model S. Unless you're talking about buying a used one. I had a customer just bought a used one for $45,000 because they have insane poor resale value. He bought one that listed for 125 used with 10,000 miles and they only had to pay 45 grand. They have horrible resale value, but I'm talking about the new price of the car here. Those Hellcat engines are insane. Now, it is old technology. They're push rod engines. They're not even overhead cam engines. I put out a tremendous amount of horsepower. Of course, they're tremendous gas hogs too, but we're talking about speed for the lowest price possible here. Straight line speed too, just like the Mustang. They're not cornering marbles. They don't corner all that great, but if you want straight line speed, you really can't beat these Hellcat engines today. And Dodge has gone so far that they sell what are called Hell Crate engines. They sell ones that you can bolt on to the old 60s chargers and stuff so you could make them insane personally i would never do that those old ones really didn't handle that well and with 700 some horsepower you're probably going to kill yourself if you do that but they're making the kits available for anybody who wants to try now the next speed car i'm talking about might surprise you it's the Tesla Long Range Model 3. If you added a second motor to it, that would make the price go up to $50,000, but that's still less than my $60,000 base I'm talking about. And then that thing can go 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds. That's pretty fast. Electric motors have full power all the time. As soon as you turn them on, they go. And one of the advantages of the Teslas is they have a low center of gravity and really sharp steering. We call battery packs our weight is low down. So they actually handle really well. I drove one once and I was impressed by the acceleration and the handling. Now it is a full electric car and I'm not a big fan of that, but if you want speed, that's the way to go in an electric car. You can probably get a used one at a really decent price. If you want an electric car that can really go fast. Now the next fast car, the 2018 Camaro ZL1 1LE. A special model. And yeah, I admit I'm cheating here. It's a little over a thousand dollars over 60 grand, but it's close enough. It's a classic muscle car. It's got 650 horsepower with a supercharger. That's how it gets so much horsepower, just like the Mustang did. And it's matched to a six speed standard transmission, just like the Mustang was. It's a classic muscle car for somebody who wants the stick shifter and a lot of horsepower. While the fancy Corvettes, the new one with the mid engine, are going more for the European type market. The Camaro pretty much is stuck to its muscle car roots. Supercharger and a six speed standard transmission for guys that really like shifting. That's part of the driving experience of those things. So now you know some super fast cars you can get for under $60,000 if you feel the need for speed. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.